Okay, everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Live It Up, the show where we explore and discuss how to take your life to that next level and beyond. We cover health, wealth, relationships, and how to create a life you absolutely love. I'm your host and coach, Fletcher Ellingson. Amy is out today, so today it's just you and me. As a reminder, if you have questions that you would like us to address on or off the show, you can send them directly to me at Fletcher at FletcherEllingson.com or visit me at my website, FletcherEllingson.com. Check out all the free resources there for creating a fulfilling life. Hey, before we get to today's email question, I'm going to take a minute to read a testimonial I received uh, recently. And the reason I'm doing this is because it's important to point out and celebrate what's going well in life. We hear so much of what doesn't work or what's wrong in the world. It's good to hear something uplifting, right? So here's a testimonial I recently received and it says, I have tried every diet known to man and had some success only to gain it all back. I couldn't understand why my success in losing weight was always short, so short-lived. When I first heard of Fletcher's 90-day course, I was reluctant to do it because I felt it was another dead end for me. But he was able to help me to see things in a different way I had never seen before, and therefore I was able to make the changes I needed to truly be successful moving forward. I was finally able to see what was causing me to go right back to old habits. I now have the willpower and determination to succeed long term because my mindset is different. I owe it all to Fletcher, Amanda H. Amanda H, I'm so happy for you. And if you or someone you know has an uh, area of their life that they want to transform, do something radical. Contact me and we can work together. It's fun, it's inspiring, and you'll get off the chart results. And speaking of that, here's an email from someone who wants to get different results as well. It says, hello, Fletcher. My wife and I seem to continually argue about emotions. She says I have the emotional aptitude of a slug, and I say she has such a huge array of emotions that I never know what she's feeling, and I don't know if she knows either. We're at opposite ends of the spectrum. Any advice? Derek. All right. Well, Derek, first of all, thanks for reaching out. Remember what I always say, strong people reach out and ask for help and advice. So, thanks for being a part of this conversation. First off, there's nothing wrong with yours or your, your wife's emotional states. You'll frequently hear me say that there's nothing right or wrong or good or bad. The question is always, does it serve your life? So in your situation, I'm assuming you express very few emotions, uh, nothing wrong with this. The question is, does it serve your life? And if you don't have many emotions, what are the ones that you do experience? What are the ones that you do express? Many men say they feel as though they experience very few emotions besides anger, frustration, and fine. And by the way, fine is not really an emotion. But people say, I feel fine. And not to stereotype, but many women do report that they feel a lot of emotions on a regular basis. So it can leave this gap when it comes to connecting with your spouse, or anyone for that matter. So here's the deal. You can experience a lot of emotions, or very few, but whichever it is, it doesn't mean you're emotionally aware, it doesn't mean you're emotionally in control, or emotionally educated. In fact, many people say they just feel like emotions happen to them. Maybe some of you out there can relate to that too. Well, what if they didn't just happen to you? What if you could more and more intentionally create the emotions you wanted to experience. Wouldn't that be cool? Just to be able, whenever you want, to turn on emotions on demand. If you wanted to feel happy, boom. Grateful, joy, amused, creative, excited, loving, romantic, or whatever else, you could just turn it on on demand. Well, it's, I know it sounds weird, but it's actually possible. And today, we're going to discuss this important topic. And why is it so important? Well, it's because it plays a huge role in determining the quality of every moment of your life. We're going to talk more about that when we get back, so stay tuned. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. Welcome back to Live It Up. We're talking today about emotions. What are they? And do they just happen to you? or? Do you create them? And if you create them, how? Well, first, let me ask you a question. 
Do you have anyone in your life that laughs a lot? You know that person who just seems to find everything funny and can laugh at the drop of a hat? And you know how that laughter can be really contagious and pretty soon you both are laughing over the seemingly most silly thing. I remember in high school I knew this family and there was so much laughter in that household. I used to love to go over there. They would crack each other up all the time. We'd frequently laugh until we cried and it felt really good. Um, and I got a question, another question for you is, do you know anyone who always seems down in the dumps, sad, depressed? You know, they seem to live in that place of sadness and the glass is always, always appears uh, half empty, right? Well, how does it feel to be around them? And next question, do you know anyone who is always upbeat, positive, energetic? How does it feel to be around them? You see, each of these people experience life differently because of what they focus on. You see, what you focus on and the story that you have in your head about any given thing creates an emotional state. Whatever you focus on is going to create an emotional state. Those emotional states affect the quality of your life, in fact, every moment of your day. And notice, I didn't say anything about what was happening in the real world. I just said, whatever you focus on. You see, the story in your head is so powerful, it doesn't necessarily even have anything to do with what's real. What's real. And let me give you an example of this. It's a, a visualization that we're gonna do together. So get comfortable in your chair, wherever you are, turn off your uh, phone. It only takes about 60 seconds, but it's really effective in demonstrating the power of what you focus on and how that affects your emotional state and what it does in your body. So get comfortable, here we go. It's just about 60 seconds, and it's most effective if you can close your eyes. So um, close your eyes. Here we go. All right. I want you to imagine that you're home in your kitchen. All right. You see the kitchen, look around. And then you see your refrigerator. And really see it. What color is it? Where is it located in your kitchen? Now, imagine you walk over to it and you pull open the door to the refrigerator. You see the shelves of food illuminated by the interior light. You feel the coolness of the interior it hits, hits you in the face as you open it. And then you see your vegetable or fruit drawer and you reach out and grab the handle and you pull that towards you. So you open the fruit drawer and in it you see a bright yellow lemon. And you grab that lemon, you feel its smoothness, how it fits comfortably in your hand. And you bring the lemon up to your nose and detect that familiar, fresh, citrus odor. And then you close the door of the refrigerator and you walk over to the counter and you pick up a cutting knife and you grasp the, and hold the lemon in one hand while slicing the lemon in half. And you feel that knife slice into the flesh of the lemon and you see some of that lemon juice spill out onto the knife and onto the counter. And you get a sudden stronger whiff of that citrus lemon scent. Now you put the knife down and look at the two wet halves of, of lemon there on the counter. And you grab one half the lemon and you bring that juicy fruit up to your nose and breathe it in. And then you raise that lemon a little bit higher and, and you tilt your head back. And then you prepare to squeeze the lemon juice right into your mouth, right onto your tongue. All right, the visualization's over. But notice what's happening in your body right now, specifically your mouth. Is your mouth salivating? It's you, that usually is, the, is what happens when people do this exercise. And why is your mouth suddenly salivating? There's no lemon in front of you. You may not even be in your kitchen or your house for that matter. You see, but your body responds to the thoughts in your brain. It sets off a chemical reaction. Your body is anticipating and readying itself for a bite of lemon because that's what you have been focusing on. That's what you've been seeing in your mind. And your mind literally can't tell the difference between what you're imagining and what is real. Now, this is a, a simplistic example, but effective. And it's what happens to us continually throughout the day. Our mind sends signals to the rest of our body based on what we are focusing on. Think about if you go to the movies, right? If you, th if you go to the movies and you see something, uh, um, a suspense or a thriller movie, I mean, you are on the edge of your seat, right? And then there's a loud noise and bam, you, you suddenly are startled because it's what you've been focusing on. 
And now, if you just, and then if you go to a comedy and you're laughing, if you go to a sad movie, you're crying. Now, if you take a moment and step back, you realize these are just actors on a screen. There's, there's a camera crew around them, there's uh, lights, there's all sorts of costumers and people just off the set. It's not real, but our, whatever we focus on, we experience that. So, how can we use this to our benefit? When we realize what we focus on gives us our emotions and our emotions determine the quality of our life, we suddenly can begin to create the emotions that we want in our life. So, because we realize that they come from our thoughts. So let's, let's take a, um, another example. If you want to, let's, let me ask you a question. Are you more or less willing to take on cleaning out the car or cleaning the house if you can listen to music? Are you more or willing or less willing to exercise if you can listen to music? You see, the answer is most likely that you are more willing to do these activities if you can listen to music. Why? Is the activity more enjoyable? Or in the case of cleaning the house, is it less boring? Yeah, right? Do you find yourself dancing a little while sweeping or vacuuming or wiping down the counters? Well, why? Well, it's because our focus has changed. We can intentionally change our focus by adding music to a task that is normally tedious or boring or d that we don't want to do. You see, we're experiencing the music in our mind and body and we're singing along with the lyrics. We're moving our bodies. We're breathing. The emotion may not be joy, but it's not dread. It's not agony. It may be more along the lines of, I'm capable, I'm satisfied. We're, we're satisfied with the result of our cleaning, satisfied at seeing progress. We're maybe experiencing a sense of pride in that clean, shiny car or tidy home. You see, our focus is on the music and the beat and the lyrics and dancing. And then cl and cleaning, that just is happening in the midst of that. In fact, if this is our routine for cleaning, it's quite possible that we can change our association to cleaning completely. It can actually become a fun or enjoyable activity. You see, what we focus on gives us our emotions. Our emotions give us the quality of our lives. We're going to come back and uh, talk a little bit more about this in just a few minutes. Stick around. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back to Live It Up. We're talking today about emotions. And why? Because they determine the quality of every moment of our life. If you can learn how to create your emotions, like I said, on, even, on demand even, then you can create a lot of freedom in your life. I'll give you another example. Having fun for no other reason than having fun. So many times it seems like we have to have an excuse to have fun, all right? It's a birthday or a celebration or a win or something. What about just having fun for the sake of fun? I'll give you an example. Uh, one year we hosted a birthday for my wife and we had about 30 some balloons that had been blown up and were scattered throughout the house. At our house, we love to play group games. They're a blast and there's lots of laughing, lots of feeling good. But one of the rules that night was any time a balloon popped, we'd crank the music, we'd stop what we were doing, we'd crank the music, and we'd dance for 10 seconds. And, and mind you, there were all sorts of people here, right? So these balloons were scattered, some downstairs, some upstairs, some in the kitchen. But if one popped, we stopped what we were doing and we danced. And what happened? Uh, smiles, I mean, I'm, I'm laughing. I'm, I feel good just thinking about it. People would sometimes pop two or three balloons in a row just for the uh, for fun because <clears throat> it was so funny and, and uh, humorous to watch everyone just stop and bust a move. So, uh, you know, that was, that's creating emotions on demand. You see, we, we focused on something <clears throat> and then the next thing that's uh, really important to create an emotion is you change your physiology. So instead of just, you know, like this, in this state I'm likely to feel something that's a low energy emotion. But when we're popping the balloons, cranking the music, and moving our bodies, we feel up, right? We feel high energy emotions. We feel like we're having fun. So one year I decided to go further. Let's, I, we decided to host an evening of talent in our front yard. I invited a bunch of people from the town to come over and share their talents. And there was music, there was jokes, there was dancing, there was magic, there was uh, acrobatics. It was a blast. And in fact, now we've done it for five years in a row. And why? Because it feels good to connect, to play, to laugh, to clap. It feels good to create those emotional states. And, when, and it's intensified with, with, uh, if there's more people there. So there were no winners or losers, and it was, just, it was just a wonderful time of sharing talents. You see, your emotions create the quality of your life. 
Have you ever been in, to a game where you really wanted to win, but it didn't look at all like that win was going to be possible? Or maybe you were not the one playing. Maybe you were watching your favorite team or watching your child play, and it just didn't look good. How do you feel? Right? You feel kind of nervous, a little down. And uh, how, do they, how do they feel? They might feel disappointed, right? It might feel like a big letdown, or you might feel hopeless. They come off the field during a timeout, and their body language might really show how frustrated or disappointed they are, right? But then there's a turning point in the game, and the team starts to come back. And suddenly people feel hopeful. Their body language changes. They're suddenly alert, right? They start to get excited. They start high-fiving and cheering and clapping. And then suddenly the game is tied up and everyone is going wild, so wild that they would never be seen like this in normal life. But they can't contain themselves. And then in the last seconds of the game, you win and people are jumping up and down. The band is going crazy and people are elated. They just had a massive emotional state change because of what they focused on. They, they, they uh, changed the story in their head. They changed their physiology from just sitting like this to standing up on their feet cheering. And most of us are familiar with this scenario. We've been there, right? And we've watched movies about it. We love movies about that. So what happened? Well, the, the team started winning. You identified evidence for it and then believed that it was possible. And then your brain released all those feel-good chemicals, the dopamine, the serotonin, and the endorphins, and bam, you're feeling good. That's how quickly you can change your emotional state. This can happen in so many areas of life. But most people think that it happens to them as uh, opposed to them being able to create these experiences. Most people think, it just happens to me. I just feel sad. I just feel depressed. I just feel angry. Think of our balloon busting game when we busted those, those uh, balloons. There was, there was nothing at stake. We just created a game that felt good when you played with it. If you focus on a story that's romantic, how do you feel? Yeah, romantic. So the question is, can you create this story in your head? How do you feel if you focus on something scary? You feel scary, but it's all going on in your head. So let's do a, another quick exercise. We've got a couple more minutes left. If you focused on a, uh, on a story just in your mind, not saying it's happening in real life, someone breaking into your house, could you feel uneasy? Could you feel nervous? Could you feel vulnerable? What if you focused on a story that when you went out, everyone was judging you or talking about you? Could you begin to feel insecure? All right, then let's flip-flop it. What if you focused on how good you were going to, to uh, do in the interview or your presentation? If you visualize it over and over, could you become confident? Could you start feeling secure? Absolutely. That's, that's exactly what athletes do in the locker room before they take the field, right? They're totally amping themselves up and, and high-fiving, right? They're butting helmets, then they're talking each other up, listening to music, getting pumped up because they know what you focus on, what you do with your body, what you say, and how you use your body creates emotions by triggering chemicals in, in your brain to which your body reacts. They, focusing, they focus on the empowering story. And the other thing that they do to change their emotional state is what they're saying to each other, right? Instead of saying, oh, I'll never be able to do this, they're like, I got this, we got this, right? We're powerful. So what you say also changes um, your emotional state. In fact, the three things to change any emotional state is what you focus on, your, uh, your physiology, how you're standing, how you're breathing, right? Where's your head and your shoulders, and what you're saying to, uh, what you're saying to yourself or to other people. Now, does that take practice? Heck yeah. In fact, you're already practiced at it. Whatever emotions you feel on, a mo on, your, on the most regular basis are, are because of your patterns and habits. You are so practiced at creating your emotions. In other words, you've been practicing your whole life. Let me ask you a question. What are you doing in your life for the sake of fun, to create emotions that feel good? What are you doing in your life to create the emotions which will give you the quality of life you desire? Remember, it comes back to what you focus on. What's your emotional state at work? Are you feeling alive there or dead? <laughs> Are you feeling challenged or bored? Are you feeling anxious and stressed out? Are you feeling fulfilled and satisfied? How do you want to feel at work? 
If, you're not, if it's not the way you want it, you can change it. I used to sit a lot at work, and so I raised my workstation. I got one of those standing uh, workstations, and I discovered that when I'm standing, I'm moving my body more. I don't get so stiff. I don't get tired. And then I started uh, bringing music to work, and because I realized that I, I'm more productive when I have a little music there. And I was dancing and moving my body, and did it, do I look silly? Yeah, I looked silly, but it made other people smile as they walked by, right? They're like, what's going on with Fletcher in there? He's dancing. Yeah, I was dancing and having fun. I'm on, the, I'm on the phone with clients, and I'm being productive. If I feel good, I'm going to be more productive, and my, my clients are going to be happy too. So it's all within your power to change your emotional state. And if you want more one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, work with me and, or attention and, or want to learn about this, contact me at Fletcher at FletcherAllingson.com. But that's it for now. And so you know what to do. It's time to get out there, be a source of contribution, be a source of kindness and connection. You matter and you have something to offer this world. And I believe in you.